If Guru Maharaj is telling the true person of who you are, be direct your mind, take a sorti to your mind, don't let your mind do that to you. Don't let your mind bully you into doing what you don't want to do, for that in that place lives negativity and you will live in negativity. If Maharaj is saying to you, be direct your mind this way, then that means you are not your mind, for you have the ability to direct your mind, which means if you're not your mind, that you're something else. Vani Guru Guru He Vani Vich Bani Amrit Sare Guru Bani Kehe Sevak Janamane Paratak Guru Nisatare Ferret a ferret a prabaya Periato Saranae Naneke ki prabbeniti Apani pagati lae Naneke ki prabbeniti Apani Pagati Lahe Param Satkar Yog Guru Khalsa Saad Sangha Ji Gaj Vaj Ke Fateh Bulao Vahe Guru Ji Ka Khalsa Vahe Guru Ji Ki Fateh We're all blessed to be in the company of Sahib Siri Guru Nanak Dev Ji Maharaj and I say blessed in this 2023 as we sit in the warmth of the Guru's Jaran in the warmth of the Guru's Jaran in this sanctuary in the warmth of the Guru's Jaran at their feet we sit and why is it that I say that we're blessed for we say it so often but let it be heard to us anew that as we sit before the Guru, it's not by our own efforts, by our own graces, that we come to sit before the Guru. It is because of the Guru's kindness. And when we truly understand that, there'll be nothing left to have within our hearts as we sit before the Guru, other than shukrana, a state of gratitude. As we understand that Maharaj, through your care, through your kindness, through your nadri, You've allowed me to come into your Sharan. It's a chance for us to reflect. It's a chance for us to look inward. And really have a hard conversation with ourselves. Guru Pyari Satsangha Ji, for many, the stuff, what we're going to speak about today, I use the word stuff, the, the, the content, the subject which we're going to talk about today is something that perhaps is of great interest to many of us but yet for reasons to do with societal pressure to deal with outward appearances to do with what we think is or isn't allowed to be spoken about we don't express very often and that is how we are doing now you're probably thinking we use those words all the time we see each other and say hey how you doing But we often overlook our own state of mind. And we put on a smile outwardly. And as I sit before you, Guru Bihari Sad Sangaji, this is a place of truth. I include myself. I'm in fact, I'm speaking primarily to myself here. Often it is a case, perhaps much more in the past, we put on a smile outwardly. Yet inwardly, we're in a difficult state. And so. What is it that's causing us to struggle? What is it that causes us to wake up and look in the mirror and not like what we see? How is it that we are financially, occupationally, societally in a place that if we were told we would be here 10 years ago, we would rip that person's arm off as a salesman and say, I'll take that any day of the year. If somebody offered us to be where we are right now, having passed those exams, studying at those courses that we've longed to enter, owning that estate, 
living in that house, being in that relationship, having that family. If somebody offered us that at the shop and said, I'll sell you this in acceptance for the fact that you'll be happy. You say, guaranteed, I'll take that in a heartbeat. And yet here we sit as one of the most accomplished communities in the country celebrated by the establishment and all those that create the figures and the stats as one of the most successful communities by the way that we're measured in the world and yet we can't stand our own company sometimes and we're sitting here just looking for our phone to take away the opportunity that might present itself to be in the company of your own self per chance you might not like what you see how is it that we are able to be outwardly so successful and inwardly we are suffering so much? Because Guru Maharaj is explaining to us that the world, the success that we achieve in this world is something that we have to do in a worldly sense. But if we sacrifice ourselves to, just to that endeavor, there'll be no room within to actually ask the real questions and make progress where it really counts which is within. Guru Amr Das Ji Maharaj explains to us that the chasing of that salesman's dream, the chasing of that salesman, salesman's bargain, as I've put it, the house, the car, the family, the societal success, the financial success, the professional success, the chasing of that won't make you happy. Guru Maharaj explains this so plainly to us. Guru Arjan Dev Ji says, Sarab Sukha, all of the Sukh in the world, Sarab Sukha, Ma Paliya. That all of these things they emanate from me. I've in all of these things are within my grasp to take. Sarab sukha me palia har jevad na koi. But none will come into no one will come into a competition or be on anywhere close. Or we can say in the language of Islam that none will be on the level of what it means to receive the name of God. Akko satanam siri vahi guru. Guru Pyari Sahasanga Ji, Guru Amr Das Ji explains this to us in such a beautiful way and this is going back hundreds of years before modern science, metaphysics and the societal sciences have caught up. Guru Maharaj explains by Maya Mamta Mohani Jinavina Danta Jagakaya. Maharaj explains Maya, that illusion, that ever elusive goal that just when you reach the corner you think you're there, you turn another corner and there's a bigger house or there's a bigger thing to achieve. And if you achieve that, it will make your mind happy and your mind will let you rest and it will be subdued and it will allow you to be happy. Be Maya, Mamta, Mohani. Be that Maya, Jinavin and Danta, without any teeth, without Dand. Jagkaya has eaten the whole world alive. The subtle way that Maya has taken a grip and it allows itself into your mind. And by the ways that we've been taught to measure ourselves, we're constantly berating ourselves. It may be a all too familiar, and I hope it's not Guru Pyari Sadhsangaji, but it might be an all too familiar feeling to wake up in the morning, in spite of the smiles and the laughter and the giggles that were put on the night before, in the company of friends, in the social gathering, we'll wake in the morning and we look in the mirror and we say such hurtful things to ourselves. And we speak such a negative rhetoric, and it's the same rhetoric every single day. And yet, we don't even think about whether or not we should be challenging that rhetoric, that conversation. We've become so enslaved by our minds that we don't even understand that there's a challenge to be had. Because Guru Pyari Sadhsangha Ji, we are not our thoughts. We are not our mind. The mind, just like the hands and the feet and the knees and the wrists which bend and allow us to move in the way that we need to, the mind is just another tool, another part of this physiology. But what's happened is we've become enslaved to our mind and we think that we are the mind. I'll give you an example of this that will probably bring it a bit closer to home. When somebody asks you who you are, you say, my name's Dajinder and I'm a social media analyst. Or you say, my name's Bulraj and I work in cloth clothing. And so we associate ourselves by our mind's occupation. Without even knowing it, we're, we are giving ourselves solely the identification through the mind, through Maya. And Guru Granth Sahib Ji Maharaj is constantly telling us that we're not our mind. How is it that Maharaj is telling us nearly so, how much Bhangdiya, in that nearly the whole of Slok Mala Nava, Guru Sahib is saying to you, they're saying, Amandeep Singh Bi, you are not your mind, Bi, Kaho Nanak Paja Harmana Pare Najam Ki Fas. 
So just let's break this down over and over again. You'll hear these words. They're saying to Guru Maharaj is speaking to us. Guru Tegh Bharati is speaking to us. And they're saying, Be, tell your mind to do this. You can only tell your mind to do that if you're not your mind. And if you're not your mind, then you're something else. Why is this so important, Guru Pyari Sadhana Ji? This is a, is a foundation background for what we're going to speak about today. If Guru Maharaj is telling the true person of who you are, be direct your mind. Take a sorti to your mind. Don't let your mind do that to you. Don't let your mind bully you into doing what you don't want to do. For that, in that place lives negativity and you will live in negativity. If Maharaj is saying to you, be direct your mind this way, then that means you are not your mind. For you have the ability to direct your mind, which means if you're not your mind, that you're something else. E man meriya tu sada raho har naale, har naal raho tu man mere, dukh sab visarna. Now those words that you've heard every day, you can hear them perhaps for the first time and you be e man meriya. Oh, this mind of mine. Now you see the difference between who you are and where the negativity, where the negativity dwells. Be man meriya tu sada rahe, tu sada raho har naale. Be don't feel that you've got to be away from me. Be come home. In that in that in that couplet, the words that are most prevalent now that jump out at us now is the direction to the mind. You are not your mind. And it's where you're in the mind where your duk resides. It's in the mind where we are consumed by our mind, that's where suffering resides. You think about it, Guru Bhari Sazangaji, from every sort of pain you've ever endured, where has it existed? From the broken arm, the broken wrist, even then it's in your mind that those senses are being relayed and they're being told be, you're, you're, you should experience pain now. <laughs> and that pain exists in your mind. But by Mati Dasji, who was there, who was beyond the mind, that when a sore was placed on their head, they said, do what you will to my body, I'm beyond this body, for I am beyond this mind. And as a sore was placed on by Mati Dasji's cease upon their sir, as it would be drawn backwards and forwards, they would be in Ananda. Sare akho Ananda. Sare akho ji Ananda. Guru Pyari Saad Sangat ji, there's so many words, beginning of colourful letters. The F's and the C's and the B's that all roll off your tongue, you'll, you'll make a rhyme. But when we say the word Ananda, we're so reluctant to release this from our body. Let's direct our mind, Guru Pyari Saad Sangat ji, Ananda meaning that supreme bliss which there is no equivalent to in the English language and which there's no opposition to in Gurumukhi either is Ananda. Sare akho Ananda. Guru Pyari Saad Sangat ji, let's be a little bit more comfortable using the words to which we want to direct our mind per chance that it will listen. Let's have the language that we need. Be Ananda. Ananda. Ananda Ananda Sabako Kehe Ananda Guru Te Janiya Ananda Ananda Sabako Kehe We want Anand But let's destroy our mind How is it we can destroy our mind? How is it that we can go beyond our mind? Guru Maharaj explains to us So just to recap on this Guru Pyari Sadhsangha Ji We are not our mind For if we can direct our mind I am not my hand Nobody would ever say to me I am my hand Nobody would ever say to me that Amandeep, you're your knee. But yet we become so associated with our mind, we are not our mind. And Guru Maharaj is directing us, who we really are inside, that jyot, that light within us. Maharaj is saying to us, be yo, take control of your mind, man. Don't let that thing bully you, that it takes you into its tentacles. But it works for you. It, you don't work for it. And in this way, Guru Sahib is saying to us, if you do this, you'll go beyond death, like by Mati Das Ji, by Sati Das Ji, by Diyala Ji. But Amandeep Singh, and I'm talking to myself here, with all due respect, I hear what you're saying, but the things that go on in my mind, per chance you would have an insight, you would never want to speak to me again. Interesting thought. The thought of the mind. Gyani Kalwan Singh Ji said something once, which really resonated with me. They said that if any person knew the thoughts of another person, any other person, no particular person, not notorious person up in Pentonville. If any person would per chance know to know the darkest thoughts of another person, any other person, that person would never need to, would never speak to that person again. And what I take from that is that it's not that some are dark, 
within the mind there is the ability to enslave everybody and many jin vindanta jag khaya without any teeth have been enslaved in this way so the sids come to guru nanak patsha and they say to guru nanak patsha that king of all kings they say maharaj be how do i sort my mind out man be my mind is got so much negativity and it. it makes me feel so guilty it makes me feel unable to move forward be if you knew what was going on inside my mind it's easy to speak about these things but if you knew what was going on inside my mind and i got really interested in this conversation because i've had a very i've had a very colorful childhood growing up into the teenage years and i've got a wonderful array of things that i could lay out some colorful list of things that really i'm not proud of but make up who i am and i look back on them some of those things with guilt be amandeep singh how is it that you're going to be able to surmount these things the things that you have done and i say that i share that with love with my brothers and sisters because those things are in the past and we're not here to define ourselves by what we have done in the past if ever of you have been involved and i wish it upon none of you but if any of you have been involved in a car accident a serious car accident where the car's rolling and you can hear the metal crunching and you you can imagine that car rolling over and over and you've been involved in a serious car accident or a serious accident of some sort you would not define yourself as having you wouldn't define yourself as the car accident you say that happened in the past and similarly you wouldn't relive it every single day you wouldn't wake up every single day and relive that accident every single day the seat belt pulling up on your neck the car rolling over the hand the airbag coming out and burning your wrist you wouldn't do that because the accidents in the past you say to yourself why would i possibly want to relive that tragedy and yet the things that we have done in the past those may have been mistakes and those are mistakes but we shouldn't use those mistakes to define who you are they say a mistake is just a mistake it's not a death sentence so we define ourselves our definition of ourselves ironically is based on all the things that we have done and that's actually quite debilitating for you wouldn't consider yourself to be a car accident but yet we consider ourselves to be a victim of our own past when i say a victim i mean we are preventing ourselves from moving forward on an individual level and on a panthic level because we consider ourselves unworthy guru pyari sat sang ji let's have it straight this isn't a path of worthiness i'm not worthy none can say that they're worthy and none who have been worthy have claimed to be worthy This is not a path of worthiness this is a path of daya a path of compassion and it's a path of progress that as we step towards the guru the guru will be compassionate to take a million step towards meeting us on this journey nobody can claim to be worthy of where we sit today right now even even the deg that we're going to get from guru maharaj and the hukumnama that we're going to receive the blessings that we're going to receive who can sit here and say we're worthy of even those gifts so the sids come to guru nanak patsha unworthy just as we sit unworthy before the guru with the same complaints about their minds as we have about our minds and these are the sids these are the most spiritually elevated people of the world that have been caught by maya and they're at the feet of guru nanak patsha they say to guru nanak patsha be how is it that i can control my mind and guru nanak patsha they give examples they give three examples from gurbani guru sahib says you're asking me how to clean the mind How is it that we can clean the mind of the past that we don't define ourselves in this way that per chance we can look in the mirror have a bit of man a bit of respect that we can move forward Guru Sahib says let me give you that answer by giving you two examples in the pretext Guru Sahib says pariye hat pair tan de pani tote utr sukhe They say if your hands and feet are dirty if your hands are covered in filth If your feet are covered in dirt but ye hat pair tan dehe if your body is dirty in this way but ye hat pair tan dehe pani tote utr sukhe what you would do is you'd go to a sink and you'd wash your hands you'd wash your feet you can wash your body in the shower if your clothes are dirty mut paliti if your clothes have become spoiled with urine mut paliti kapre ho your kapre have become in this way dirty de sabun le ye oh toy guru sahib says you take liquid soap sabun le ye oh toy and you would use soap to clean those things the sid say to guru nanak patsha they say okay that works for my hands and my body but no matter how many times i apply bodily soap no matter how many times i apply water to my body 
and soap to my clothes and I clean myself outwardly but my mind is still polluted Guru Sahib goes on to say Oh Tope Navik Maharaj goes on to say Pariye Mata Papa Ke Sangha If your mind is covered in dirt Pariye Mata Papa Ke Sangha If in your mind you've got bad things that are constantly rattling around Oh Tope You can watch that Nave Ke Ranga What is the solution Guru Sahib saying to us Oh Tope Nave Ke Rang If you wash your mind in the rang, in the love for the name of God. And it's really interesting, Guru Pyari Sahasana Ji, Maharaj uses the word rang, to use the word love. Oh Tope, if you want to clean out your mind, if you want to change the state of your mind, the way that we can do this is to wash it with love for the name of God. And I thought that was really interesting as I was reading the Dika, as we come across the teachings, as they've been given to us by the great saints. Sant Gyani Garbachan Singh Ji, they record these teachings from Guru Gobind Singh they've been passed down on that lineage and they say very specifically the word apply yourself to saying the name of God with love they're saying call out the name of God from a place of love in your heart and I thought that was really interesting because when we look at other faiths and we're not here to denigrate any other faith but if you look at other faiths in the world they talk very transactionally about what needs to be done there are lists of things which you can do and lists of things which you can't do. But Guru Sahib is not talking about a list of items. They're saying, have love in your heart for the name of God. And I thought that was really interesting. This isn't a flow chart that you can go down. Guru Sahib is saying, Pro, go undertake a certain way of being, live in such a way, be in the company of those that allow you to have love for the name of God in your heart. And that sounds very easy. Guru Sahib says, Thakur Gaye. Atam Rang Be sing the praises of God again Guru Arjun Dev Ji saying Be Atam Rang Within your mind Do it from a place of love How can we go about doing this? You say Amandeep Singh It's easy to say But how can I have love If I'm full of all this negativity? How is it that I can have happiness In my, in my mind for God For Guru Sahib When I'm full of all unhappiness in my mind? Gyanik Kalawan Singh Ji they say something so beautiful and it's such a wonderful rule to live by. Gani Kalawan Singh Ji give this teaching and this is something that's really practical that we can apply in our lives even from the moment we leave this to the Darbar. They say everybody's looking for happiness in, in their own being. Everyone's looking for happiness throughout what they're teaching, whatever, whatever they're looking for in the world. How is it that we can go about having happiness in our own being? That we can remove this constant state that no matter what I've acquired, what I've obtained, whatever I've obtained or attained, that there's still an unhappiness nagging away at my mind. And Gyanik Kalwan Singh Ji, they say, they give a wonderful example based on Itihas. They say the best way to go about obtaining that which we want in this world, the best way to go about accumulating what you want most in this world is to give it to somebody else. And I was like, that made no sense to me. My background is legal. So I'm a litigation lawyer. I'm looking at contracts all day long. What do you give for what you get? It's very transactional in my profession. How can you go about getting something through giving it? It goes against everything in the commercial world that we're going to learn. It's going to go against everything in any market stall trader, any shopkeeper will say, don't be silly. How can you receive something by giving it away? Gyani Kalawan Singh Ji, obviously they're the professor. So let's go to school. What is it Gyaniji is saying? They say, look, when we say give it away and you'll receive it, we're thinking about cars. You're thinking if I got my car outside, if I give it to somebody else, how am I going to have another car? How am I going to get a better car? What Gyaniji is saying needs to be just broken down a little bit. And if we can understand this, it will be such a key to our own happiness. Gyaniji gives an example. They say, look, you don't really want the car. What you want is how that car is going to make you feel. And the car will make you feel happy. That's what your mind's telling you. You don't really want that house. When you buy the house, you're not going to start licking the windows and you know, start hugging the door of your house. Hopefully you won't anyway. But you want that house because if you think that car will make you, that house will make you happy. And it will make you secure. And it will give your family certainty. We really think that we need these relationships in our lives. And I'm not disrespecting any of the relationships that we have. 
But what we really want is how those relationships, if you break it down, it's how these people make us feel. The certainty of a mother, the strength from a father, the backup of a brother. It's how those relationships make us feel that we most want. And ultimately, the real root of all of our desires is we're seeking happiness. And Gani Ji goes, well, why don't you just bypass the middle thing? If you really want happiness, if you want a nand in your life, dedicate yourself to serving other people and bringing a nand and see how that turns you around. I'll give you a little funny analogy, something that happened to me. I was in Brighton. <laughs> I was in a tea shop in Brighton with my missus. Don't ask me why I was in a tea shop. It wasn't my own choice. And she's picking up tea from these jars and she's putting them into these things that you weigh and you put them on these scales and you... And you can pay an, an, an enormous amount of money for this tea, disproportionate amount of money. Away. Anyway, we'll talk about the cost of the tea another time. And we're in the queue to pay for this tea. As we get to the front of the queue, there's this Chinese lady who's from, who's from abroad. She's Chinese and she can't speak great English. And her card keeps rejecting. And she's trying to pay with a foreign card and it keeps rejecting on the till. And people behind me in the queue, who are, I'm directly behind this lovely lady, and they're getting a bit annoyed now because she's been there for about 90 seconds, two minutes, which in the current time with no patience in the world, is, you know, it's an eternity. It's, you, know, you can get a sentence for that, wasting two minutes of someone's life these days. And in the end, I stepped forward. I said, look, what is it? She goes, my card's not, she goes, not working. Card not working. She couldn't speak very good English. I said, look, no problem. And I paid for the tea. It wasn't, it wasn't, a, it wasn't a significant amount. It wasn't going to break anyone's bank. But I paid for her tea. And she couldn't understand. I was saying, there's a system. You're in need right now. I've paid for this for you. When you see someone hungry, someone that has no clothes, you buy something for somebody else. And after about three or four times, she understood that I was saying, I've paid for this and you just find someone in need and you pay it forward. And she started really welling up in tears. She got so tearful, she started hugging me because obviously the understanding of Seva, we've been born into this system. We're lucky to be thinking of it second age. We don't think it's a big deal. But you see... Instagram reels being made of this, getting millions of shares and likes because in other cultures, this is not the norm. To be born into the house with the guru where everything's a gift. You know, we think no, we, there's no real skill in doing that. But here's a really interesting thing. The lady behind the counter, she goes, we'd like to give you this. And she gives me this big pot of tea. And the tea's more expensive than the tea that I'm buying. And then the other guy at the counter, he's polishing a teapot. He says very loudly, he goes, looks like we've already found the winner of this month's raffle prize. <laughs> we ended up leaving with more tea than I could drink. And my point is, is this, it was a perfect example of what Gyanji was talking about. It's a small example, but it rings true. The frequency rings true. That we just want to take away that woman's duck. She, I felt really sorry for her that she was struggling. People were giving her a hard time. She was quite small, quite intimidated. We paid for her tea and we got, I didn't plan to, we got free tea. God knows what was in that raffle and these vouchers and stuff. The point is, is this Guru Pyari Satsangaji, you'll know from your own experiences that if you dedicate yourself in any which way you can to bringing about happiness to other people, that in this way your own state of mind will change. And that villain that keeps berating you will have less reasons to, as you're given a little bit of man. Now this is not to be confused with ego. I'm not saying that you should go around looking at yourself going, Mabobadaya, look at me, I've done all these amazing things. No. But it's a far cry from hating yourself to being completely in love with yourself. There's a middle place there. We have a little bit of self-respect. If we don't have a little bit of self-respect from the actions that we have done, the hard conversation we have to do is look at our actions every single day. There's a direct correlation between people's happiness and the amount that they're doing for other people. I'm going to say that again. There's a direct correlation between how happy you are and you'll be your own measure right now as we sit in the Guru's Jaran, me feeling just about okay, feeling really happy or feeling negative between what we're doing to serve others and how much happiness we have in our lives. Look at those examples. Look at those Bibya, those Mama, those Nanya that have passed from this world. Whenever we think of them, we smile. Their happiness is still giving. And all that they would ever do would be thinking about the wellness of others. Who was really happy? Who was really the benefactor of those actions? Was it you as they gave you that computer game that your mum wouldn't buy you? Was it you as you got the chocolate bar that you had been thinking about as you go to your boy's house, your chat? Was it you that was really the benefactor of that happiness? Or was she even more pleased? Or he even more pleased? Guru Pyari Sat Sangaji, there's no switch that we're going to be able to flick 
that will improve the state of our mind. It's the actions that we undertake. And if we take a focus on that, then things will start to pop. Guru Pyari Satsangaji, we're going to go into a bit more technically now. The modern sciences have given us so much, but really all they're really doing is unraveling the teachings in Gurbani. Here is a real way in, science, in, in the scientific method that we can understand our state of mind and what we can do to change that negative talk that goes on. Guru Maharaj says, Joman, Jesi Mansa, Desi Dasa. Guru Sahib makes it plainly clear, Jesi Mansa, that depending on your thoughts, Desi Dasa, that's how you're going to see the world. That your state of mind is a direct consequence of the thoughts in your mind. Guru Sahib is explaining to us, Joman Peke Paramana Tesa, Jesi Mansa, Desi Dasa. Follow me very carefully with this Guru Pyari Satsang. This could really help you on your day to day battles with your own mind. Guru Sahib saying, Joman Peke Paramana Tesa. That depending on how you choose to see the world, Desi Mansa, depending on the thoughts that you choose in your mind, and I'm putting the emphasis on the word choose here, Desi Mansa, Jesi Dasa. In this, Jesi Mansa, in this way, your world is, ex is not objectively defined. Now, someone challenged me on this when we were in, I was in Canada doing, doing Qatar and someone put their hand up in um, the Khal Saeed headquarters. Trust Khal Saeed. No, we love you Khal Saeed. And he said, that's not true. You can't say to me that the world is defined by how you look at things. There's an objective reality here. And he said, Amandeep Singh, this Vajah is right here. That's not down to my choice. I can't think it away. Guru Pyari Satsang, you just follow me for a few minutes and you'll tell me whether that Vajja is here and whether that really applies in this situation. Because we always want to externalize the way that we feel because for as long as it's someone else's problem, someone else's fault, then it's not your fault and you can't do anything about it. But that's not the way of the Khalsa. That is not what Guru Sahib is here to do. They're here to liberate us from our mind and allow us to walk towards that Ananda. Sare Akko Ananda. Guru Sahib saying to us, that however we choose to look into this world will determine how we feel on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm going to give you an example that's very close to my heart. Last year a girl went missing in East London. She was, she was, she was very young. I'm going to keep the details vague because it's the family privacy. She was very young and she would, there was rumours that she had been abducted and that she was in the company of several older men. And there was allegations of maybe there being some sort of a religious um, tensions going on here. You all know what I'm referring to. And the Singhs found out about this. The Singhs say, we, we can't have this. The police are not going to get involved because it's not been 24 hours since this young girl's gone missing. So they're going to wait 24 hours. A lot will happen in 24 hours. We speak to those that are involved day to day in this seva. You'll know that 24 hours is a long time. The, some of the things start to raise an alarm in East London that this has happened. Enough's enough now. There have been too many instances of this kind. So what happens? The Singhs decide to get together, the Singh and Yaa come together and there's a massive rally point at a coffee shop. Everybody gets together, it's about 11 o'clock by the time everybody's been rallied together. And the plan is that they're all, with, there's a rumour, someone had heard a rumour that this girl would have been spotted in Brixton, of all places. And in Brixton town there was a spotting of her, someone had recognised her from the campaign that had gone on social media. So the plan was that everybody was going to get together and it was just Everybody coming together doing what they could do. People were going to photocopying shops and getting plaques made. Others were getting wood. They could stick it to the plaque, make it more uh, inflexible. Other people were going getting sellotape. Some people was going to get things printed out from the printing shop. And it was just everybody just coming together in one superior mind. And during the midst of all this, there was a constant reminder as family members would be turning up late from work. Chacha, Daya, Bua crying their eyes out, be please find this girl. Constantly people would be turning up in a state of shock, be, we can't believe that our daughter's gone missing, our niece has gone missing, please, what can we do? About 11 o'clock, convoys set out to go and find this girl who's gone missing. And they get to Brixton at about half past one in the morning. Anybody that's spent time at Brixton will know that it's just one long stretch and it's like all neon lights, it's just loads of nightclubs that come to life at night and the whole area is just one stretch of these nightclubs. And about one o'clock in the morning, half past one, we get there. Some of the things are in Barne, and we're walking around at the, by the Brixton station, giving out leaflets saying, have you seen this girl? Have you found this girl? Excuse me, has anybody seen this girl? And behind all these nightclubs, anybody that's been will know, there's these massive tower blocks that go back, the herald back to the 60s. These massive 
like iconic tower blocks and all these lights on things are going up the towers knocking on doors with the lights on have you seen this girl thinking that that might be an appropriate place to look so we get there about half past one two o'clock in the morning and all the nightclubs are now emptying out onto this parade hundreds of people are coming out it's like a nighttime market and there's it's cold it's dank it's dreary we're thinking maybe february but february and there's all this mud on the floor that's turned to slush there's urine on the floor from people that have done a, a number one on the walls there is the smell of vomit in the air if people are vomiting girls are falling out of their clothes as they're falling out of the club it's just a really scary intimidating so in the background you can hear racial slurs being said and at any moment you could hear it's about to kick off as the things are going up and down these tower blocks excuse me if you seen it get out of my way i'm busy people were being quite rough and one of the lads were there he turns around at half past two he goes he goes mac get here fast yeah because how have i ended up here because i was just at home five six o'clock i was sitting on i was sitting watching tv and my little one sitting with me watching tv we were watching tv it was warm we were going to get a pizza we we're going to chill out my missus was there everyone was happy because now i'm here surrounded by urine and feces and people giving us racial slurs i'm looking at women that i don't want to be seen in my eyes they're going to be in my mind because how have i been stuck here this is galjug man i'm stuck because i've got to go home i'm going to get it nick i'm going to get in the neck from the missus we're not going to get home till six in the morning and he's said that and everybody puts their head down and everybody's been quite negative about it they're like oh, they're quite despondent and i'll, ne- I'll never forget this guru piyari said saying to you for as long as i'm alive one of the other things he goes i totally disagree with you he goes where here is amrit villa it's three o'clock in the morning it's amrit villa and i'm surrounded by the sings i'm surrounded by seva dar of the pant and we're going to find this girl and this echoes what baba deep singh ji would do when the hindu sisters were being stolen away to be sold in afghanistan as slaves and just as baba deep singh ji and sukha and by sukha singh by metab singh would go and they would smash the caravans and they would rescue those girls and they would take them back to their families and those that wouldn't be accepted for being impure and in by the brahmanistic standards the khalsa would be charged with accepting them as their sisters and they would make sure that the families would do them no harm because it's amrit vela i'm standing with the singhs we're doing maraj di seva we eho lekha this lekha lik jaane koi will be written forever because nobody could write this for me if somebody gave me a pen today and told me to write that i would be here be i was just sitting at home with my family having a pizza with my little one with my missus and i got a phone call from the sings i'm so lucky to be here have you found this girl have you seen this girl guru pyari sad sangat ji the way that we view this world is not an objective reality it's entirely down to you what you choose to see in any given moment and it's entirely down to you how you focus on what you can and cannot do in any given moment you could be in brixton surrounded by urine and feces in kaljug or you can be in brixton and it's anand this amrit vela and it's written in your summer that you were with the singhs doing maraj di seva baba deep singh ji is in your mind जो मन पेखे पर मन तैसा जैसी मनसा तैसी दसा दोस टू पीपल वर इन द सेम प्लेस बट दे वर इन अ डिफरेंट प्लेस एंड वेयर दे चोज टू बी वाज एंटायरली देयर चॉइस वन वाज डायरेक्टिंग हिज माइंड ही वाज इन द सेम फीसीज द सेम यूरिन द सेम स्टेट ऑफ डार्कनेस बट ही डायरेक्टेड हिज माइंड टू इतिहास बिकॉज़ ही हैड इट ही हैड द गुरुज हिस्ट्री इन हिज हार्ट सो ही कुड सी इट फॉर व्हाट इट वाज एन अपॉर्चुनिटी द अदर was being directed by their mind one was directing their mind and the other was directed by their mind guru pyari sad sang ji it's entirely up to you there's nobody in this room that would deny that they have the ability to do good and that if you did do well and if you did do that light in this world if you brought that light into this world into somebody else's life the natural consequence for that would be a shift in your consciousness jin seviya tin paya man jin seviya tin paya man that if we do seva of the pant if we do seva of this world if we help those that are in need tin paya man in this way you'll be honored 
When I say honored, I don't mean outwardly people are going to be shouting your name, for both those things remain nameless in this itihas, in this modern itihas. But where do they have? They have honor in their mind. The first thing, he straightens his back up. He goes, you're right. Have you seen this girl? Excuse me, have you seen this girl? The Guru Khalsa found that girl in the early hours of that morning. And she's with her family now. Guru Pyari Sad Sangaji, we have a responsibility, not just selfishly, to direct our minds from out of a negative state into a positive state. We have a responsibility to this world. For the mandate of the Karl size to bring light. How can we bring light into this world if we're living ourselves in a perpetual state of darkness? Guru Pyari Sad Sangaji, we want our families to have Anand in their homes at the breakfast table. And yet as we pull up a chair at that table, our mind is not full of Anand. How can we serve that at the table to our children, to our nephews, our nieces? There is a moral obligation on us that we choose to be happy. So how do we go about doing this, Guru Pyari Sad Sangaji? How is it that we can be the Singh in the company of Baba Deep Singh Ji in Brixton Town? That's a sentence I never thought I'd say. How is it that we can be the Singh in the company of Baba Deep Singh Ji in Brixton Town at 2 a.m. as opposed to perhaps where many of us live, which is in the Gandhagi sometimes, wondering how we ended up there. How is it that we can do that? Guru Pyari Sad Sangaji, Ji, there's something in science which I want to share with you now. And there is two sentences which we're going to just share together. And then the third will be the outcome. The quality of your life is a direct consequence of the quality of your emotions. The quality of your life is a direct consequence of the quality of your emotions. If you had everything financially in the world, but your whole life was passed unhappy, would we agree that's an unsuccessful life? If you had everything materially in the world, but every single day of yours was a sadness, that was a sad day, would we agree that that was a failed life? Yeah? So we know that the quality of our life isn't determined by the things that we have, but how we feel day to day. The quality of our life is a direct consequence as to the quality of our emotions, and the quality of our emotions is a direct consequence of what we choose to focus on. The quality of our emotions is a direct consequence of what we choose to focus on. This is modern science catching up with Gurbani now. Guru, this is me just unpacking JC Mansa Desi Dasa. Guru Sahib says in, in, in four labj, char labj, be JC Mansa, be the, depending on your thoughts, Desi Dasa. That's how it's going to be for you. How many people do we know that have got so much in this world outwardly, but inwardly they're struggling day to day? And there's so much unhappiness in the world out inwardly, yet on social media, we see so many smiles. But when they message you privately, they're struggling. You're like, but hang about, I saw a picture of you and you had smiles on your face. So Guru Maharaj is giving us this understanding with JC Mansa, that if we want to understand our thoughts, if we want to change our thoughts, the way that we can do that is choosing what we, to, what we focus on. In any given moment, we can choose our focus. We can't control objectively what's happening. This Vajra is sitting right here. But I can choose my focus at any given moment. But am I going to do Gita on that Vajra? Or is it going to be something else that comes out of that Vajra? And what we choose to focus on is entirely within our control. I remember being in the States a few years ago in a very negative state of mind. And I was in the States and we were looking for the war memorial. Me and, me, and my best, me and one of my very close friends, we were out there in Washington DC, there's a memorial for all the fallen soldiers. And it was just a particular interest to me that those that have fought on the battlefield, that they should be honored. So we we're looking for the war memorial for the fallen soldier, the one that remains unnamed, who's buried on the battlefields out there fighting for Tharam. And as we're looking for this war memorial, I'm in a negative state of mind. And I asked this lady, on, we're on these rental bikes, we pull over and I say, excuse me, is the war memorial this way in the direction that we were going just to get confirmation? And she says to me, no, the war memorial is not that way, it's that way, the way from which you came. You've got to go that way and you've got to do a left and a right or whatever. And because of the state of my mind, this just rolled off my tongue. You never know what sick here you're going to get from whom. I said, thank you for that. I was going in the wrong direction. Had you not told me that, 
I would have carried on. We would have never have got to the war memorial. It would have been a loss. And all this, this whole play came out of my mind and through my tongue, but it would have been a failure. We would never have got there. We were limited time. And very, very beautifully, do you know what she said? She said, no. Had you gone that way, you'd have seen something else and it would have been equally as beautiful and you'd have had a great day over there too. Guru Pyari Satsangji, I don't think we ever got to the war memorial that day. We were in a nun and the mindset changed because at any given moment, wherever you are, you can choose your focus. Any number of people can go to the same lecture, the same social gathering, and depending on what your experience is there will be how you determine it. If you go there as a musician and the music being played is all five years ago, you'll say it was a horrible party. If you go there and everybody's wearing last season's clothes, you'll say that party was out of date. If you go there and you receive some teachings from someone that improved the quality of your life, say it was a nand. It's entirely up to you what you're focusing on any given moment. And these aren't teachings that are just being spun in the world today. Although you may have heard these, these herald back to Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji Maharaj. Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji Maharaj is saying to us, Be jonar dukme, jonar dukme, dukh nahi manne. Sukha sanehu ar pehne jake kanchan maati manne. Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji, and here is, this is the Guru that we really should listen to. This is Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji that spent 26 years, 9 months and 13 days vibrating on the Guru Mantra of Guru Nanak with Mata Gujar Kaur. They sat in a pora, which is like if you want a, a basement dug out for a purpose of doing Bhagati. For 26 years, 9 months and 13 days, Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji vibrate upon the name of God and they give us this Sikhya. What Sikhya is this? Bijonar Dukme, that even in the midst of Duk, Duk Nei Mane, it's your choice to man that Duk. Duk Nei Mane, Sukh Saneho Ar Pene Jaake Kanchan Mati Mane. That for good sake, that, and that, that adulation, that love, Sukh Saneho Ar Pe and Fe Ne Jaake, that you're not consumed by either of these things, that all these things are going to come and go. Sukh Saneho Ar Pene Jaake Kanchan, just like gold, Mati, uh, dust, Mane, that we can honor these two things as the same in our world, that we're not going to get taken by these things. So Guru Pyari Sasangaji, the point that I really want to bring across today is when you look in your life and you think because of the things that are happening to you, you should be sad or you've got no right to be happy. It's just not true. That if we look at the obstacles that are in our lives, those objective things may be there, but it's entirely up to us as to how we choose our focus. It's entirely up to us as to the choices that we make. And these things slip beneath the radar. You'll hear people say, my mother-in-law is driving me nuts. No, your mother-in-law is acting in a certain way. It's your choice whether those actions drive you nuts. It's entirely your choice. I'm not berating anyone's mother-in-law here. But I'm giving an example that we assume that that person's, see how it's connected. We're saying that person is controlling me. Why would you give up your control? You say, my boss is driving me crazy. Are you really a slave? Are you saying that you're, the way that you feel is not in your hands? Are we that gulammi that we're going to say that the state of my mind is controlled by another? I don't think so. Guru Pyari Satsangiti, the very first step is to understand that we are in control. That is the hukum of Paramatma Vaheguru. And it's the Guru Khalsa's mandate to wake up from this Maya to understand that there is not an unbroken chain between the events of the world and how we feel. There is a broken chain and it's up to us to choose how we process what's happening day to day. I'll say it again, Guru Pyari Satsangiti. You can be in Brixton and you're sitting in Maya in urine, in, v, in, in vomit, or you're in Brixton in the, in the company of the Guru Khalsa, Amrit Villa. It's your choice. So as we look at our mind, and our mind starts to direct us, and time is always getting against us, what we have done today is we've established in our own minds that Guru Sahib's telling us that we are not the mind. That the way that you feel exists within the mind, but you are not your mind my friend, that you are here to can take control, take that mind back and enslave that mind the way that you've been enslaved by the mind. That was the very first thing that we established. And Guru Sahib is speaking to who you really are inside. 
the Guru Maharaj is saying to you, be enslave your mind, don't be a slave to your mind. At, Guru Sahib says, Atam jene sagalavas taake jaka sat guru pura. Guru Sahib says, your, your, at, your, your, atam, in your atam in this context means your mind. Atam jene, win your mind. If you're going to win your mind, that means you're not your mind. And as soon as we realize that, then something very beautiful starts to happen. You can witness those thoughts as opposed to be enslaved by them. And when that tape starts to play in the mornings and starts telling you you're no good or that you should feel a certain way, you can tell that mind to shut up. And that's based on established Sikh principles. Guru Sahib says you can even mana your mind, you can speak your mind willingly. And if it doesn't listen, if it doesn't become subdued, you can take a sorti to your mind. Bhai Sai Bhai Randir Singh would give the example of a dog. Say a, a mad dog needs to be controlled of the sorti. That's your mind. Guru Pyari Sad Sangha Ji, if we leave today with just that understanding that yo, I am not my mind. My mind is a tool and it's within that mind that all this dukkha resides and I can control that mind for I am something else. That will be the beginning of a beautiful journey. And we can build upon that for the Gurbani. We've understood that if we're not our mind and we can direct our mind, that the way that we can bring happiness into our mind as a pet, as one that we will direct, we will decide what goes in that trolley, what goes in that basket, what goes in that shopping basket, then we can direct what's in there. And Gyanik Alwansinji gave us that example that if you want anand in your mind, be dedicate yourself to giving to anybody else. And I challenge you to take this, to take this experiment this experiment of bliss, be dedicate yourself to the joy of others and you be your own measure as to how much happiness brings into your life. And if you think about how unhappy you might be right now, be honest with yourself about how much you're doing for others and you'll see that, yo, that's a little bit empty. <laughs> and you'll see that to be true too. Then we gave an example, Guru Pyari Sad Sangha Ji, just going through this recap. The example was that if you're in control of your mind, you can fill it with something wicked. You can fill it with two things. As you direct your mind away from Netflix and all that nonsense that's put you in the state that we're already in, we can fill our mind with the Gur Shabbat. And Guru Nanak Bacha explained to the Sids that if your clothes are dirty, you wash it with soap. If your body is dirty, you wash it with water. And if you want to clean your mind, Pariya Mata Papa Ke Sang Oho Tope Nave Ke Rang That if you take love for the name of God in this way, your, your mind will get cleaned out. I've understood that to mean that if we serve others from a place of love, if we recite Gurbani from a place of love, then that negativity will get eaten away. And then Guru Pyari Sad Sangha Ji gave an example that was very close to my heart, which is something that concerns me as we're hearing more and more cases of issues with our younger sisters in this world. And even in the midst of Dukh, as we look for a sister, as we look for a daughter, even in the midst of Dukh, as we might think others are crying, you can be in a place of Anand. And I'm going to just leave you with one last thought, Guru Pyari Sad Sangha Ji. If you are lucky enough to take the Shabbat into your heart and recite Gurbani from a place of love, if you're lucky enough to adopt in your mind today, that today and this day forward, I'm going to serve others from a place of love. If you're lucky enough to learn Guru Sahib's Itihas so that when the situation presents itself, you're with Baba Deep Singh Ji as opposed to Brixton Town, then what I'm going to say to you now will make sense. In Mir Manu's jail, in the last one minute that we have, in Mir Manu's jail, when, those, when our sisters, our mothers, our foremothers, our mothers from the generations before, when they were put in chains and being told that give up your tarim, or we're going to kill your children. We're going to throw your children in the air. We're going to catch them on spears, as was being done. We're going to chop your children up. We're going to muck them into necklaces and make them wear them around your neck unless you convert from your sikhi. When they were being told to do this in the tika, in the pehli poti tika of Sant Gyani Gur Bachan Singh Ji Khasa Pindra Wale, it's written what those mothers would say in that most horrific of darknesses. Our mothers, what did they say? As their children were being put on necklaces around their necks, as their children were being thrown in the air and caught on nidje barshe, pointy spears. What was it that our mothers said? They said, Ao pana, Sahib Guru Arjan Dev Ji nu yaad 
Let's think about Guru Arjan Dev Ji Singh Vakta Tita Vi. Let's think of Guru Teg Bahadur Ji Maharaj as they became Shaheed. Because they were saying, listen, you can put me in chains, but there's a difference between being imprisoned and being a prisoner. I have my Guru's Itihas with me. I have my Guru's history with me and I'm made of iron. Even in those cells, they were in Anand. And that for me is such a teaching. Be Amandeep Singh, as you're placed in negative places, it's entirely your choice whether you're going to let those things consume you. That when your mind tries to subdue you, you take a sorti to your mind, for you are not your mind. And you can sit with your mothers in a different place. And you can direct yourself that, yo, we might be in a prison, but that doesn't mean I'm a prisoner. For I have my Guru Sahib's Itihas to set me free. My Guru Sahib's history to set me free. Now, Itihas means something different, doesn't it? Now we need to study. Because Itihas is there, we have two weapons to free us from the shackles of our mind. Two weapons. One is Gurbani. Gurbani will give us the Udaran, they will give us the example that wash your body with water, your clothes with soap and your mind with a love for God. Gurbani will give us an Itihas. Itihas will give us that teaching that yo, even in those circumstances, it is still possible to direct your mind. So my brothers and sisters, I invite you. I invite myself. I've got no right to direct you. I'm just speaking to myself here. Be Amandeep Singh. In any given scenario, take the Guru's Itihas as your own and let it direct you and take control of your mind that just because it's a negative situation doesn't mean I'm going to be in a negative state of mind. When you wake up tomorrow morning and you look in the mirror and that tape wants to play, take the tape out and smash that tape. And in this way, all the duk will just fall away. So Guru Pyari Sad Sangaji, this topic is one which is quite a mental exercise to get around because we have to look inwardly and do a little bit of work and fight a few cobwebs. The only wish as your servant, as your brother, your younger brother, as I sit before you today, the only wish is I just want the Sangha to be happy, man. And I believe that if we take Guru Sahib's Itihas, we take Guru Bani, there's no place but Ananda. Sare Akko Ananda. So let's take functionally the Guru Sahib's Bani into our lives. Let's commit to bringing the Shabbat into our lives in 2023 to change our focus and control our mind. Let's take Guru Sahib's Itihas into our minds that when we're presented with a choice, it's our choice, my friends. It's your choice entirely. Do you want to choose happiness? Or do you want to choose not to choose happiness? I can't use the other word. I won't direct the mind. Do you want to choose happiness? Or do you want to choose not to choose happiness? So we must have made many mistakes. We're not worthy to speak of those mothers, our mothers sitting in those jails. Every time we speak of them, it just makes us feel so grateful that this is the band that we allow to be a part of. And that need for shukrana ever rings, ever from ever more rings, more true and necessary. And we're going to just recite the Guru's mantra three times for a place of shukrana. Maharaj is 2023. Even now, after all the time I've wasted in 2022, you let me sit with you. Even now, Maharaj, you keep us close. Be Maharaj, thank you, shukrana, shukrana, shukrana. Be, I'm going to direct my mind. I am not my mind. I'm going to direct my mind. And now I lovingly from a place of love call your name. Sari Akko Vahe Guru Vahe Guru Vahe Guru Vahe Guru Vahe Guru Guru Pyari Sad Sangat Ji, I ask, you f I ask for your forgiveness. You are the Sangat of Guru Nanak. If I've made any mistakes, if I've offended anybody, I ask for your forgiveness. May Guru Sahib bless us all that we have Seva in our lives, that we have Bhajan, that we have Simran in our lives, that we can take control of our minds and we can serve the Sad Sangat. We lekhe kathena chuttiye khin khin pulan hara baksan hara baksile nanak pari otar Vahe Guru Ji ka khalsa Vahe Guru Ji ka 
If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, share and subscribe. Please donate and help spread Guruji's message. Link is in the description below. Vaheguru Ji Ka Khalsa, Vaheguru Ji Ki Fateh. Vaheguru Ji Ka Khalsa, Vaheguru Ji Ki Fateh.